B2 Gold Corp is headquartered in Vancouver, Canada. Founded as an exploration company in 2007 with zero gold production, today it is the world's new senior gold producer with five operating gold mines and numerous exploration and development projects across five continents. Located 300 kilometers north of Namibia's capital, Windhoek, lies B2 Gold's first African development project and first African gold mine, Ochikoto. Gold in Our Veins is a documentary about our Ochikoto gold mine in Namibia. It tells the remarkable journey of where our gold comes from how it is mined, and why it continues to have such extraordinary value, not just for shareholders across the globe, but for all Namibians. How does gold get here? It's a story that begins six billion years ago, and it finishes here, at the home of B2 Gold. Ndawe is the hands of the mine. It is her job to find out where the gold is. She has to make sure she gets the right gold ore in the right quantities. I have a rock specimen which has some veining, some sulfide veining. We've got some calcite here, some pyritite in here. And this could possibly have some gold grains, which is invisible to the naked eye. What I'm going to show you now is a sample depicting some coarse gold. This such is a very small sample. This is magnified about 40 times. This is really small, it's less than a millimeter in size. And this is what we call our coarse grained ore. And we also find some fine gold in the pit. Ndawe directs the reverse circulation drilling team to where the gold is likely to be. The drill rig takes two rock samples. One goes to the lab for analysis, and one is analyzed on site by Michelle. Looking at these chips, um, as I can see, there's parite, pyrotite and uh, magnetite, so the possibility that there should be gold, it's very high. Ndawe arranges to drop off the rock samples to Philippe at the on-site laboratory for further analysis. How may I help you? I've got a batch of urgent samples to send through to you. Philippe is the eyes of the mine. It is his job to tell everyone else exactly how much gold is in each rock sample. Hello, Philippe. Hi, Ndawe. We managed to finish our results on time. How's it looking? It looks like we have high grade here and the repeats are repeatable. Send them through to me then, please. All right, thank you, Ndawe. Bye bye. Ndawe now knows she has the right ore for the processing plant. To get at the gold, you first have to blast it. Now it's time to get the ore out of the pit as quickly as possible and into the rock crusher. My job is to extract as much gold as we can from the ore. So now it brings our ore from the pit into the crusher. So the crusher crushes the rock from 25 centimeters to about 15 centimeters. The rock is then conveyed onto the course or stockpile. From the stockpile, the ore is conveyed by the conveyor into the mills to break down the rock size from about 15 centimeters to about 1.1 centimeters. From the mill, the rock is crushed to almost sand to give you a slurry. Now the cyclone cluster that you see here separates the coarse sand from the fine sand. The coarse gold is extracted via the gravity circuit and the fine gold is extracted via the leach circuit. So in our process, we dissolve the gold into cyanide. And now to get the gold out of the cyanide solution, we use this coconut carbon, and then we loot it. We then have a solution that's concentrated with gold. Now it's Colin's job to make sure that we get all the gold out of the fragrant solution and make gold bars. The real value of the Ochikoto gold is measured not by how much you have, but what you do with it. We've all contributed to this bullion. From exploration, the mining people, the truck drivers, blasting, people in the administration, processing plant and we from the gold room. We cannot eat this, but we are making a living out of this bullion that we are holding in our hands from bit to gold. 
So Namibia is a very special experience and it embodies all the things we're trying to do. We're unusual in the lack of expats we have working in our mines. It's typically 97, 98% of the workers are from the country and uh, our goal is ultimately 100%. That there was people that said you'll never find workers in Namibia. We found those workers, now we've taken a lot of those workers to Mali. They're now the trainers. Working in Mali, they have to pass on the B2 legacy. We do things in such a way that we empower the local population to take responsibility at the end of the day to make it theirs. Before you can deliver the shareholders, you have to deliver to the countries you go and to the promises you make to the leaders and the people of the country. One of the key reasons for the success of B2 Gold is delivering on those promises, and that's respect and fairness and transparency. And this is a very special place. To be able to, to work in harmony with the environment and a mine, I think it's a first. And I think this is a game changer for mining. The Ochikoto mine is located on 20,000 hectares of farmland in the heart of Namibia. Whilst 2,000 hectares is used for mining, the rest is being managed as a game reserve home to a wide range of African wildlife, including rare and endangered species. We should never forget that Africa is, is on the rise. And so if we're going to operate within this continent, I think we must do so with, a, with compassion, with a social conscience. You've got to always give back, and what you give comes back manifold. We're ahead of the curve. And examples like this in Namibia, Ojikoro, and the whole thing we've done are just going to continue to show people this is the right way. The Ochikoto mine has become a center of excellence, a living laboratory combining education and scientific research with conservation. Once we're gone, we leave something behind that is sustainable. It supports the communities, it educates the people, and it makes them just realize that you've got to look after the earth. This is a gift that we've been given to hand on to all future generations. It's our legacy. Mm -hmm.